we're going to talk about Ron skins. All about Ron skins, with the caveat that it's really only for the second order linear, homogeneous, ordinary differential equations. But we're going to learn about Ron skins for those. So, what's a Ron skin? I am glad you asked. We're going to figure it out. So, we're going to start with um, something just like a simple standard first order or second order linear, um, homogeneous, ordinary differential equation. And we're going to be given the initial conditions of um, y at some x naught is equal to k naught, and y prime at some x naught is equal to k1. Why is it that? I don't know. That's just how we set it up. Now, we've already shown, we've already shown, I've already shown, and maybe you were there. Um, so we've shown that if I have two solutions, that if... Um, y1 and y2 solve this, then we can do a linear combination of the two. So c1, y1, plus c2, y2 also does. Okay, so we're going to use that. And it's going to be amazing, and you're going to be so excited. Because who can't get excited about Ronskians? Because they just sound cool. All right, so... I know this, let's go ahead and use my initial conditions to get started. Y at X naught. Come here. Okay, so um, do, 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 do. That means that it equals K naught. And it's C1, Y1 at X naught. And C2, Y2 at X naught. And similarly, if I'm going to apply my um, differentially thingy initial condition, that's k1. k1 is equal to c1, y1 prime, x0, plus c2, y2 prime, at x0. Yay! This is, <laughs> this is already, like, super duper exciting. Okay. Um, so there. First step. All right. Now, for absolutely no reason, except that I'm a sad, lonely mathematician, I'm going to call this number one, or color. I like coloring things. Coloring things usually works better. So I'm going to take the yellow thing, and I'm going to multiply it by um, this for no particular reason. So let me, let me actually do this. So I'm going to multiply stuff. And I'm doing this because in a minute I'm going to multiply by y1 stuff. So basically, I'm going to do the first one by y2 prime. Multiply the whole thing. Why? Again, lonely mathematician. The kind of lonely mathematician that makes YouTube videos for fun about math. Okay. Um, I'm going to zoom out little bit. Whoa. All right, I'm going to do this, and then we're also going to do... <laughs> I know. All right, so we're going to do this one by this one. I know what I'm doing now. And we're going to do this one by y2 at x naught. So I'm going to multiply that. Out. And rather than make you watch me do all this, I'm going to pause the video and then do it. So you go do it, and then I'll meet you in a sec. Okay, so I just did that. And wasn't that exciting? Okay, so now you see I did the multiplication all the way through. I'm going to zoom back in and, and go look at it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to add these two together or subtract them. Let me subtract them. That would be better. Do, 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 and do, do, do. All right, I'm going to subtract these. So if I subtract this whole thing from the top one, then on the top I end up with um, y2 prime, this thingy, uh, minus y2 not prime this thingy and I'm going to pull this c1 out and I'll end up with this thingy and you're like this is stupid why are we doing this we'll say because it makes us happy because we're interested because we love learning all right and then you're like but but you ran out of space and I'm like but it doesn't matter if we ran out of space because basically what you're going to see is that this thing and this thing are the same thing so that's actually just a plus zero. And so I've got this amazing solution that C1 
is equal to, uh, we'll call it blue stuff, or green stuff, no, blue stuff, blue stuff over green stuff, all right? And you're like, that's really helpful, thank you, because I'm just simply not going to memorize that, because I don't want to. All right, but here's the thing, is you don't actually have to memorize this. This is actually kind of cool. So you see if I multiply or divide it, then I get blue stuff over green stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to look at and show you right here, which is kind of cool, is this is actually a special thing. This right here is our famous Ronsky, and you're like, that's not really cool because it's just a bunch of random numbers put together. And I would say, sure, it kind of looks like a bunch of numbers are pulled together. It kind of looks like a chain rule or a product rule, right? Except it was a product rule, it would have a plus sign. So you're like, well, that's not that interesting either. If it's not a product rule, then what is it? It's something even cooler. And to help you see what it is, let's take a, a quick jump down memory lane and see if you remember what this means. Do you remember doing something like that? You might go, no. Or you might go, yeah, that's a determinant. And in determinants, it's yellow stuff. They're important in math, in matrices. It's yellow stuff minus blue stuff multiplied by each other. So it would be 6 times 5 minus 3 times 2. So it would be 30 minus 6, and that would be 24. The determinant's important because if the determinant is 0, in a lot of, in that means, in a lot of applications, that means that things are unsolvable or it really means something special. So a determinant is something really, really cool about a matrix. So it's basically the stuff across and this minus the stuff across. So what we can actually do is we can rewrite the stuff in the green with a determinant. So would it shock you, right, that green stuff, so this is my Ronskian. And if you don't remember what determinants are, you want to go re review those because those are definitely important. We call this my Ronskian. So my Ronskian, if I set it up just right, is I'll end up with, um, if I put my y1 here and my y1 prime here, y2 here and y2 prime here. So you'll see if I do that cross multiplication thing, so if I multiply things going this way, I get y1 y2 prime, and then I subtract off things going the other direction, which would be y2, y1 prime, and that's actually my Ronskian. So one of the cool things about it is you can see this kind of pattern show up a lot um, in, these, uh, in these particular kinds of applications. Um, now, the other one, the one in blue, doesn't actually have a name, but it does something very similar. Okay? So the one over here that I can't apparently reach... The one over here in blue does something very, very, very similar. Um, it's got a thingy. So thingy in blue is actually equal to the determinant of, if I put the y1s here, and I put the k naughts here, then if I do the cross multiplication, I've got k naught y1 prime. That looks like koi. <laughs> k naught. That looks terrible. <laughs> k naught. <laughs> y1 prime minus k1 y1, and these are, are sorry, k2, oh, I've got two, sorry, those are supposed to be twos, what am I thinking, how could I not know that those are twos, twos, okay, k2, so the crossy thing is two, and the other crossy thing is two, and that's exactly what I have up here, which is really cool, because it means that you can rewrite the first constant as one of those Ronskian thingies, or one of those uh, determinant thingies, over the other one. And there's actually going to be a pattern here for the second one, for uh, the second constant as well, and I can show you that additionally. So that's kind of cool. So if I want to find a constant, if I know the solutions and I have initial conditions, I can just throw this into a computer that can't even do symbolic math, and it can come up with something for me. So this is really neat. All right? So the next thing I want to do is I want you to see if you can show something similar for C2, all right? So this is a really good opportunity to kind of figure this out on your own, so pause the video, go see if you can get this working. Okay, so you might be like, well, what do I do, all right? So I'm just gonna give you some steps along the way, so you say, well, this time, maybe I wanna multiply by Y1 stuff. But remember what happened last time is that when I multiplied that this thingy went away in the middle, or last time, whenever I did it, this one actually went away. These two went away because I did by Y2 prime and Y2 regular. So now if I want the C1s to go away, 
then the first one I want to multiply by one y pri y one prime and the second one by y one regular. So I'm going to multiply by y one at x naught prime and the other one by y one regular, hoping that whenever I multiply all those through, that those things will will figure themselves out. So um, go see how far you can get on that. Okay, so all that's done. Now if you got this far, you might be stopping and wondering, but that looks weird because that actually looks like a, a backwards, a backwards round skin from what I had because last time I had those in a different order. Um, not those, well these were in a different order. So these were flipped in the previous example and indeed if you look, I had the, the y1 prime was second and here the y1 prime is first. So that's really not a problem. I can just reverse the whole thing by again multiplying the whole thing by a negative one. So, um, so I can do that, multiply the whole thing by a negative one, if you can see what I'm doing, and then um, that, will, that will reorder things. Okay, so I'm going to go through here, and I've just kind of dropped the at x equals zero and assuming that you can keep on track. This is again, ooh, no, don't do that. This here is again my Ronskian. Ronskian! There, I'll do it like that so you know it's not W factorial. Um, but what you might say, okay, well, before we had this blue thing, what is this blue thing? Because if I do what I did before, which was the, um, the Y2s, then obviously that's not going to work because it has Y1s in it. Well, it's actually really neat. If you put the Y1s here in the first column and these, the Ks in the second column, then if you do that cross multiplication, you get Y1, K1 minus Y1 prime K0. So you get the same thing, same strategy. So it might not be totally obvious until you see them side by side. So basically the idea is that if I know all these things, um, then I have that C1 is K0 K1, Y1, Y1 prime, over the Rotskian, which, sorry, Y2, I keep putting that. Y2 and Y2 prime over the Rotskian, which is Y1, Y1 prime, Y2, Y2 prime. And then for C2, I actually end up with something that looks um, very similar, which is Y1, Y1 prime, K0, K1, that's a not, K0, um, over Y1, Y1 prime, and Y2, Y2 prime. Okay, so basically what you can see is for C1, I've replaced the first column on the top with the initial conditions, and for C2, I've replaced the second column on the top with initial conditions. And therefore, I've been able to come up with, um, with um, constant values uh, for, those, for those coefficients in a, in a really kind of a clever way. So this is kind of a neat thing that you can do. Um, it, it's just kind of a fun little application as well of, of um, whatever you call those things, determinants.